Hey everybody, Jake Klein, Photog Travels. So Jake, you take these wonderful photos. What is it that you use equipment-wise? Well, let me tell you about that. Hey everybody, Jake Klein, Photog Travels. So this video is going to be about photography. I'm going to do this in a three or four parts. So this is part one. And um, this one is going to be about my gear. What do I use on average? So um, I had a bunch of different cameras. And recently there was a show called WPPI, which is a big wedding show that happens here in Las Vegas. And they had a, one of the uh, vendors had a... Uh, um, a deal going where they would purchase at a really good price your older used equipment. <clears throat> so I ended up trading in a 5D Mark III that had about 175,000 actuations, which it was past its prime. Um, still working great, but you know, definitely, definitely getting along there. Kind of like buying a, a car with 300,000 miles on it. Eh, it. Might keep going for a while, might not. Um, I had a 6D. And that had about 80,000 actuations on it, so it was, you know, it was up there in age. Um, and then I had, uh, those are both Canon cameras, and then I had a Nikon um, D750 uh, with the SB600, I believe, flash, and a 28 to 70 lens on it. Uh, low actuation, so that one I actually got a little bit more for. Uh, but anyhow, I traded in those items, and I ended up with a uh, 5D Mark IV, which is the predecessor of the 5D Mark III, which is the camera that I used 90% of the time for the last probably four years, three or four years? Yeah, probably four years. Uh, most of the photography, most of the photos that you saw in the first two years of my journey um, traveling around North America and Canada and everything were uh, taken with the 5D Mark III and most of them were taken with this lens. This is the pretty much the standard go-to for every professional Canon shooter uh, and for that matter Nikon and anything else. Uh, this is the 24 to 70. This is still the version 1. Um, only reason I didn't go with a version 2 is the version 1 works great and does everything I need it to do. Um, sharp enough for me um, and I've been very happy with it through the years I bought it brand new um, and I've definitely got my money out of it uh, my money's worth out of it <coughs> excuse me um, in fact it, <laughs> I don't know if you can see well first of all they've fallen off but I had my my name Jay Klein photography on there uh, now it's kind of doesn't quite say that. Here, I guess I should do it like this. It doesn't quite say that anymore. <laughs> um, anyhow, uh, it got bumped so many times as I was carrying it around through the years from conventions to concerts that I actually put a piece of uh, electric tape on it, which somebody said, you don't see the red stripe everywhere, so people won't know you're using an L-series lens. I don't care what people know or don't know that I'm using. I'm telling you people because... It's important to know that, um, you know, if you ask yourself, how does Jake take those amazing photos? <laughs> I don't know if people say that or not, but <laughs> some people have said that to me, so uh, I'll just leave it there. Uh, and the answer is L-Series all the way when it comes to Canon. Um, the flash that I have used, this is now, this is the standard uh, 580 EX2. Uh, I didn't go with the 600 or any higher because I don't do off-camera flash with uh, speed lights. Um, I do have two strobes and I use those off-camera if need be and uh, both of them can be remotely triggered uh, from the camera itself or just from a flash itself. So uh, that's what I use. Uh, you might be asking yourself what is that weird thing he has attached to it. So, when I was at WPPI about uh, four years ago, 
there was a company there, and this was when the uh, 3D printing was big. There was a company there that was selling these, and they let me try it out, <clears throat> seeing that I was pressed at the time. They let me try it out, and I was really impressed with the throw. So um, this is a, a bounce or reflector or whatever you want to call it. Um, I did have the Gary Wong or whatever it was um, <laughs> container <laughs> on there for a while. I wasn't really happy with it um, besides the way it looked. <laughs> um, the reason I like this is because it is very much bendable so you can mess it all up and then it's 3D printed uh, and it can be used in two different ways. So standard way you would have a flash would be like this bouncing off the ceiling or shooting directly at somebody or depending on your situation if you need to bouncing behind you or bouncing just slightly off of a curved ceiling so I'll get more into the details of what you can do with a flash uh, in another one of the videos uh, so a standard bounce or whatever you want to call it, um, we go like this. Uh, let me put it on the camera and show you the problem with that. So I'm shooting like this, fantastic. I get a nice bounce. By the way, the shape of this is what I love about it. Its throw is kind of more coverage of a person, but without blasting them. So it's a very soft uh, throw onto someone's face, and uh, I absolutely love that. Um, and that's what the shape of this does. So maybe you can see the curvature and see the way it's designed. Uh, I like it, and I've done before and after photos of. Uh, I did it the other day when I was at uh, uh, Photo Booth Expo, and there was a, a an Asian gentleman who was asking me about the camera and the setup, and particularly about the. Uh, my deflector and uh, a reflector and um, so I, I did a shot exactly the same settings with it on and with it off and he was very impressed and took down the name the name by the way I don't even know if they're still in business but it's wing w-i-n-g I believe I think that's the name <coughs> of the company they had a little tiny booth it was like a five foot by five foot booth just enough for the 3D printer and about six different ones of these. Um, so this is what I like about it. So when you are shooting, um, let's say red carpet or step and repeat, you're going to take a shot like this if you're doing a headshot chest up. But if you're doing full body, you want to get the clothes, everything like that, obviously you're going to shoot like this. Now the flash is only hitting part of their right side. And you're missing their left and you're throwing way too much light. You're probably going to get shadow. Um, on their left side and if you go like this well now you're basically throwing everything onto their left side and you it, it's just really awful so with this bounce reflector whatever we're calling it you can do it like this so I leave my camera or my flash set up like this bent okay and then because this is so flexible, I then put it onto here. So now I can take forward shot, and if it's somebody wearing full outfit, I want to back up and get a better shot of their shoes and everything else, the full outfit, then I've got to bounce the way it should be sitting. So that's why I use this. Um, yeah, tips and tricks I will get into in another video. I just kind of wanted to go over some of that with you. Um, I wear a double leather strap um, with my secondary camera. Right now I don't have a secondary camera. I'll probably buy a, another 5D Mark IV as my secondary. And then on that one I have my 70 to 200 with, uh, version 2. And the reason I went version 2 on that one was because the version 2 was a lot better for some of the low light... Uh, concerts and Broadway type shows that I was shooting which were a lot of fast action and it 
enabled me to track better and things like that. So, and it was a little bit sharper. So I went with that one. It was, it was a pretty penny, but uh, I've used the heck out of that one. So most of the concerts that you've seen me shoot uh, were with, with the 70 to 200. Um, and then as far as straps. So found this online. Uh, that's the name of the company. It is called Sujullery, Sigillery, Sigillery, <laughs> who knows? Uh, however you pronounce it, that's the name of the company. Reason I like it is it is a very wide, spongy, rubbery, stretchy uh, strap. So when I have it on, it is covers quite a bit and it spreads out the weight of the camera. So if I'm standing there, I have the camera hooked to the side. It, it spreads the weight of it, not just isolating it on one little section. It spreads it out a little bit, and it's actually quite long and large. So it's soft here as well, where sometimes you will get pressure against your chest or your back. Not sure if you can say that or not. Um, I've modified it a bit, <laughs> and by modified I mean Jerry rigged it, just using gaff and electric tape because uh, it wouldn't stay short enough. Um, I'm a little overweight. You may have noticed. I have a belly. The belly gets in the way of the strap and also it seemed to be hitting on the lowest setting. It was hitting my hip bone constantly as I was walking around. It was just bashing against my hip bone. So I've actually got it raised up to where it sits up about here. It's enough room for me to bring the camera up, take a picture, let it go. So in order for me to be able to do that, I had to kind of rig up in a couple spots. I don't know how well you're seeing that in this light, but uh, I just put some tape underneath that. That's gaff tape on the outside and uh, electric tape on the inside, as you can see. So just a couple of spots that I did it so that it's a much shorter strap. And it does have the um, under the arm hookup. I took it off because it was just annoying to me. Um, most of the time when I'm shooting and walking around, I'm constantly grabbing the camera anyway, so I don't really need to worry about too much support. Um, and then it comes with the, uh, it just hooks up so you can do a quick release. And I probably check about every 15 to 20 minutes I tighten this to make sure that it, I don't, it's not coming loose. Um, I did have a strap that was just like that and uh, I was sitting in line with about 20 other members of the press to shoot a show at the, um, what was it called, uh, at the NAM show, the winter NAM show in um, Anaheim, California. Sorry about that, lost my train of thought. Uh, in Anaheim, California, and it was called The Great I forget the name of it. It was an after party show. There's there's a gazillion after party concerts and shows. This was one of them. Uh, Buck Cherry was going to be performing, and I can't remember the other band, but Buck Cherry and somebody else. Oh, um, two other bands. I should remember their names. But in any case, uh, the point of this <laughs> is that I didn't, after walking around all day for about an hour and a half, I'd forgotten to double check on the strap, and I'm standing there. And somebody had said, oh, nice camera setup. And I said, thanks. And they said, what is it, you know, is, you know, what's your setup? And I'm like, oh, it's the 5D Mark III. This is the 70 to 200 over here. This is the thing over here. And when I put the 70 to 200 back down with the 5D Mark III, it actually jarred out of the, the clasp and fell to the ground. There was like complete silence from the 20, 25 other members of the press because they were like, you know, that's, eight thousand dollars in gear the guy just dropped holy shit excuse my French um, but I picked it up and of course one of the reasons I shoot with Canon is uh, they're built like tanks now yeah they're heavier and you're carrying around that weight but uh, I dropped it from my hip so that's not that I'm a tall person but that's two and a half three feet to the ground so um, picked it up and shot with it and uh, if I can find the one or two pictures that I was able to get of Buck Cherry before uh, pretty much all the photographers gave up and left because uh, whoever set up the lighting for that should have been shot. That was these two experimental giant LED 
like spotlights, uh, three of them, on, one on each side of the stage. Parallel with each other, blasting blues and reds and whites from just blasting the side of the singers and the performers' faces. And no other light, and a shitload of fog and haze and stuff. So, just the absolute worst shooting conditions, lighting-wise, you could think of. So, one by one, those who had limited to no quality cameras left, those who thought they could hang, hung for a little bit, and then they left. Uh, I was one of the few to last to the first or second song, and then <coughs> I just gave up because there was so much fog. It didn't matter what settings or what tricks that I had up my sleeve. Couldn't even see the guy singing, the lead singer, couldn't see the band, couldn't, definitely couldn't see the drummer. So it was just kind of a lot of noise and so bright that you were like, you know, <laughs> like, stop. So that didn't happen. In any case, uh, so always double check your strap, no matter how much you trust it. I don't care how much money you spend on your straps. They're $700 leather strap. Tighten, constantly check. If you're, if you're as active a uh, photographer as I am, um, which has continued on, you know, now I don't do it in concerts and, and conventions as much. Now I'm, you know, climbing a mountainside doing it. So, you know, you definitely don't want your camera to fall down like a, a side of a mountain. That would not be cool. I don't care if it's a Canon or a Nikon, it won't last that one. So, <coughs> excuse me, some more hot tea. This tea break brought to you by uh, Chami, Chami English breakfast tea. Thank you. Uh, so anyhow, yeah, that's that's my my gear for now. Uh, I do shoot a little video from time to time. For that, I have a drone, which is the DJI um, Spark. That's the little guy. Takes great. It's not 4K, but it's just under 4K, and it beautiful uh, pictures. I got the controller as well as hooking my camera, my cell phone camera up to it, um, you know, to, to be able to see what you're shooting. And, uh, I don't know, beautiful videos. A lot of my videos are up. Uh, if you just go to uh, photogtravels.com and there's a link right there to my YouTube page. So there's a lot of those videos, the drone videos there as well. Um, and then I have a Sony HDC 1000, I believe it's called. Um, and that it also is a 3K, not a 4K camera, but uh, does really well in low light, and that's why I bought it, because I had people, uh, local musicians here in Las Vegas, were asking, can I shoot video for their shows? And so I bought that camera, and it does pretty good in low light. Um, you have to adjust the white balance quite a bit, but it does a good job. Um, and that's about it. Uh, those, are, those are mainly what I use. Um, I shoot raw everything, so including the videos, everything at the highest settings with the most information so that if for some reason I make a mistake or need to make changes, I can do so uh, while I'm in the editing. A friend of mine just drove by, so he's making fun of me. He knows I'm doing a video in any case. So that's it for uh, part one of the photography, which is basically what gear do I use to get these amazing photos. Uh, oh, and as far as the general videos that I shoot, including this one, um, I'm using my cell phone because it's the easiest setup and it seems to take pretty good quality video. Um, I mean, it actually shoots, it can shoot in 4K. I don't have it set to 4K right now, but because uh, it's just too much information when it comes to this. Um, but it is the LG V30. So very happy with it. And um, I guess that's it for part one. And I will um, upload this, put it on to the web, on my YouTube channel. And then shortly after, um, I'll start shooting part two, which is probably more... Uh, technical stuff of the gear, what settings I use for certain things. Um, and then part three is going to be more of on the road, why do I shoot the things that I shoot, what turns me on, what you know gets me excited, what interests me. So look for those coming up soon. Uh, love to you all. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe.